I'm actually more of a Linux girl, and I bought the Surface Pro because it seemed cool. <laughs> so apparently, uh, Linux One, Microsoft Zero. Right. So I think we should start with a round of applause for you guys, because you took the time to go to a conference like Web5 and actually learn stuff and be better at your job. And not everyone does that, so that's worth a big round of applause. Congratulations. Well done. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about me first, uh, and I'm Ulrika Malmgren, and I come from, from Stockholm in Sweden. Um, I'm a tester, and I work at a company called Citirus, which is a small company, about 30 people. Um, and we started doing uh, Agile in 2003 when Jeff Sutherland came over uh, and started talking to us about Scrum and stuff. I wasn't in the company then, but we have this tradition of actually talking about Agile and holding courses. So I th I'm a tester in, in a team, but I also hold courses in, in Agile testing. So I'm also a teacher, and I do seminars and stuff. Um, we, um, this talk was sort of difficult for me to do, because I wanted to tell you about what I know as a tester, and what would you, what would you benefit as programmers from what I know. And there is so much stuff that I, that I think is important. And I had to select a couple of items that I think that you should, that will help you out in your job. So it took me a long time to actually get to, to what I wanted to say. And the reason I started working with testing is because when I studied at the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, uh, I'm a master in computer science there, um, I had a lot of, of friends who were programmers, and they were all saying that testing is so boring and it's so annoying, and the worst thing you can do is be a tester. It's, it's the worst part of everything. It's really, really boring. Don't ever do it. And for some reason, that sort of sparked my interest. Um, I was like, okay, can it really be that bad? And it sounds sort of important. Shouldn't you, shouldn't you try to, to like it at least? What can you do with it? So that's when I started testing. And I had, could try it out in a school project that we had. And it turned out I really loved it. I loved the fact that you would have to try to find bugs, and you would have to, you, if you find one, you had to sort of think, of what did I do to, repro to reproduce this? And uh, I felt a bit of a, like a detective in, in trying to figure out why did this happen, and how did it happen. Also very creative, because I had to think of all these different scenarios that I could uh, do to try to break this application. So for me, it was a lot of fun to do testing. And I got stuck with doing that. I also do enjoy doing a bit of programming, but more of on the hobby side. So the reason I wanted to do this talk was because I talked to a lot of programmers, and they asked me, what do you, what, what do you really do as a tester? Uh, and I explained to them what I do, my tactics, my strategies, and what I try to do. And they were all saying, this is in really interesting. I could really use this when I, when I write my unit tests or when I think of code. So I figured maybe I should give a talk about the topic. So I believe that everyone in this room is interested in actually building better products and writing excellent code. Uh, so that's my theory about why you're here. So my goal today is to try to, to teach you what I know about testing that can be useful to you as programmers, so that when you go back to your projects and your teams, you have something concrete to do that you can help you improve. And I'm not going to teach you how to, to write code, because I'm not I'm not, you're better than me at writing code. But I want to try to teach you a mindset that you can use when you write code uh, in order to see the bigger picture and think of other things. So I would like you to take a couple of minutes to turn to your neighbor and think of three things that would, uh, that would be beneficial for you if you could write code with less defects. So three things that would make it better if you wrote code with less defects. Talk to your neighbor for two minutes. All right, so um, hopefully we can try to find some ways that you can actually get to do these things and to do actually find less defects in your code when it's actually completed. And in order for me to, to teach you about testing, there is one really important thing that you need to know. And that is that 
When I say tested, that something is tested, I mean that it is both checked and also explored. Now, checking is something you do, for example, when you do unit tests, is that you verify that something that you agreed upon is going to be correct. So let's say that we're developing a calculator. Uh, we want to verify that 1 plus 2 is going to be equal to 3. That is a check that we can write. So checks are objective. Uh, they help you to verify, to validate. And it's something that's really appropriate for a computer to do because it's easy to, to check if this is correct or not. On the other hand, we have explored. And explored is more about uh, learning and investigating, exploring risks uh, and so forth. So this requires sapience. You need a human being to do this. So in the calculator example, if you have 1 plus 3 equals 3, that can be true. But if the bottom for 1 is here, the bottom for 2 is down here, the plus is there and the equal there, that's not really practical for a user. And that is not something that a computer can see. This is something that requires a human to actually see. Um, so in, in my team, the checks that we do are... Um, we have uh, unit tests, we have uh, JavaScript, so we have Jasmine tests for the JavaScripts. We also have... Um, um, you interrupt? Okay, you found a presentation. Good. Um, you can come and set it up. Thank you. Um, right, so the checks. Um, we, we do GUI tests with Selenium, and they are driven by SpecFlow. So we write examples, BDD examples in SpecFlow, which drive a couple of GUI tests for Selenium. The thing with checks is when you talk about, remember how, how my friend said that testing was boring? And it's sort of the same thing with unit tests. People are like, oh, unit test is boring to write. Uh, I remember a friend who told me that they had a new, a new guy coming in, and, and he asked him, well, can you write some unit tests for this code? Uh, oh, I don't know. I don't really want to do that. Okay, well, maybe you can check if your code is correct. Well, sure, that I can do. So in a way, maybe we should start talking about unit tests and maybe calling them unit checks instead. Maybe it would be more, more interesting for people. So remember this. And this is a, uh, a cause for a lot of mis uh, miscommunication because a lot of people say, well, testers, they just verify stuff. So verifying stuff is checking. And actually, computers should be doing the checking. It's really bit more appropriate for them. Humans aren't really good at it because it's so boring and tedious to do checks. So what I do as a tester, um, I explore stuff. I try to find risks um, in the application. I try to find things that will be surprises. And you don't want surprises, because surprises are not very good. It's usually a bug is a surprise. So that we try to avoid. All right, so in order for me to, to teach you a bit about this and so to make a stick, um, I wanted to, um, to tell you a story about what I did with my two teams that I work with currently. And neither of these teams have testers. Um, and I came in and tried to coach them on uh, what they can do with testing uh, themselves. Uh, because they're really committed programmers. They really, they really enjoy writing the unit tests and they're really good at writing the specifications and everything. But they wanted to be a bit better at testing. And what did, what, how we missed something, I guess the question was. So this is in the travel business, uh, charter travel, where you book the entire flight and hotel and excursions and everything in one package. And you don't have to worry about anything else. So that's the business that we're in. And these teams, they work with the web. Um, the system which actually uh, does all the server work and everything is written in COBOL. So we don't really touch that. Uh, we do the web part. And it's actually fun to see because I, the people who are programming COBOL are sitting in the same room, so I can sort of sometimes I sneak up behind them and I look a bit at the screens, and it's like dark uh, black with the green text on it. It's really, it's cool. <laughs> um, but we work with the web. So the purpose for us right now was to modernize the, the web a bit because we wanted to sell more trips, basically. But we also wanted to to get some analytics on where do people click on the site and so forth. We wanted to put up better, bigger pictures to be more inspiring and things like that. And we also wanted the, the booking flow to be a bit smoother so that it would be easier to book a trip. And that's why we actually changed the booking flow. Um, 
And this was something that was done in uh, collaboration. One, one team did sort of the rebuild of the pages, and one team did the widget with the booking flow in it. And they had to integrate these two, and they wanted to know how do we test this? Because this is the booking flow. You don't want to have any bugs in the booking flow because you want people to be able to book their trips. It's, it's, it's the main concern of the company. So they asked me how we test this. And the problem is that I came in pretty late. They had already built almost everything, and they were just into the going to release it. So I didn't really have the domain knowledge on how to do this. All I could do was try to help them test themselves. So here we have checked, and we have, this is like a recap, checked and explored, um, and the story for my team. So what we did was we used this mnemonic, um, and the mnemonic is, you know, when you're in school and you have to remember the names of rivers and stuff, you sort of put the first letter of the, all the names into one word so that you remember the word. And this, this case, the mnemonic is called San Francisco Depot. Uh, so this is a phrase to try to, to, um, to remember some things. Did I press the wrong up here? <laughs> right. So the author of this mnemonic uh, is James Bach, which is probably the most famous tester there is right now. Um, and he has six words in this mnemonic. And these are different aspects of the system that you can think of. So he starts with structure. A structure is what is the system? What is the product? So what files are involved? Um, how, uh, how do you deploy it? Sort of the physical aspect of it in a way, even though it, it is only electrons, but uh, what, what in, in the file system, where will you find it? Um, in our case, it was how do you deploy it? How do you configure this, the, the path to actually uh, find this widget and to launch it? That was what we were thinking of. After this is function. What does the product do? Uh, and this can be error handling. Does it have any special things that it does? Does it have any extra hardware that it uses or things like that? Uh, for us, we looked at the error handling part of it. Um, that was the function for us. If it doesn't really get any data or something, if it doesn't load, what, what error handling will we have? Uh, after this, we have data, what it processes. So in order to display a widget, for example, you will have things, data in it that you want to display. Uh, where does that, where does it come from? Um, what do we need to check when, when, when this data arrives to us? Do we need to verify that it is, this is correct? If we get weird characters and stuff, is that up to us to verify? Or should, should it have been okayed by the system that sent it to us? So looking at the data, all kinds of data, the formats, um, the size of it, uh, all that stuff is really interesting. So then we have platform, what does it run on? And that's basically the device, the browser, the operating system, anything like that. <coughs> Operations, how will it be used? What will the user do with it? In our case, they will select a couple of rooms, or they will select a date, they will select a destination, um, and what will they do with that? What can you, vary, what, what can you do with uh, the, the operations that the user can do? Um, and last but not least, we have time, and time is often an issue as a tester. I, I sort of, this is a common one. It can, it can be about time zones. Does your system need to handle time zones? What happens if you change to summertime, uh, and you do that in different countries at different dates? Is that okay? It can be about how fast or how slow do you do an operation. Um, so time can be pretty big. It can be anything that has to do with time. So how we used this was by uh, creating a mind map. And we took time box for this. We spent one hour creating a mind map. With, um, I made it kind of small so that you can't see, because it's kind of, yeah, you're not supposed to be able to read it. And it's in Swedish, so don't even try. Uh, we did a mind map, basically. So we ha in the middle, we had the functionality. And then in each uh, first node, we have structure and data and these six items. Um, and then we try to think of, well, in data, what can happen? In this, what can happen? Uh, after this, we did one hour of focus testing. And this we did with the entire two teams. Uh, and also the project managers stopped by, which was really nice. Uh, it's always fun to have people from the ISO of the team come in and do some testing. 
Uh, do you see things in the way that you don't? If you have the technical eyes, they might have the user's eyes and things like that. It's really interesting to get their perspective. One thing that happened was when we were uh, sort of getting started, when we, we um, divided up, like two people did each of these uh, areas. So two people did structure, two people did platform and so forth. There was one guy who was like, yeah, I, I can take the, uh, the, the structure part and then I can go back to coding. So it will be fast, sort of. Um, and the other ones were really excited to get started. But he wasn't very happy. So we did it for an hour and we found about 20 issues. Some of them were really, really good that we found and some, some things were a bit minor, but it was a good, for an hour of testing, it was a good amount of issues. Um, and what happened was when we, uh, afterwards we had uh, fika, uh, which is uh, in Sweden, it's when you, you drink coffee and eat cinnamon buns, basically. Uh, uh, so we, we did that afterwards, we had coffee afterwards. And the thing was, this grumpy programmer, which wasn't really happy about it, he came up to me and he said, this was the most fun I ever had testing. We should do this every time. And it turns out that because he had never been this focused, he had never taken on one area at a time, he had just clicked around a bit and didn't really think about it, um, he hadn't really taken an interest in it. So now he was in the position where he had to focus on one area and get this thing that I talked about in the beginning, when you have to try to be creative, you have to try to find the bugs, you have to try to break stuff. And he really loved it. So focusing is sort of fun. When do I finish? <laughs> 45, right? Yeah. So why did I want to bring up this example? I want to show you, I want to try to show you a film. Let's see if this is going to work. Yes? Anyone get the number right? Good. So this is a, an ad that was done, is, this kind of movie is done in very, a, a lot of different ways, but this one was done for, in London for the Transport Security uh, Commission, basically, because they wanted to make people see that um, if, you don't look, if you don't look for, for cyclists, you're not going to see them. So you have to be aware of the fact that there are cyclists out there. So I would like you to talk with your neighbor again and see why, how does this relate to software development? All right. Thank you. So for me, what, what this means is that the bigger sort of represents the bugs for me. Uh, the team is probably focusing on the ball, the way that the white team was doing. And you're sort of wanting to get the feature out. You want to get the feature complete. But if no one sort of looks at anything else, you're going to miss the big, the big beer bug that's, that's working around in your software. So you need to try to find uh, the moonwalking beers in your software. can remember that. <coughs> uh, but it is interesting because the thing that's, that I like with this movie is that if I look at, I know that the beer is going to come, but if I look at the passes, I can't see the beer. I have tried a lot of times, uh, and it is really impossible. I know that it's there, but if I look at the ball, it doesn't, I, I don't see it. Um, and it sort, of, it sort of resonates with me in, in how, how we can really focus. We're really good at focusing, but someone, or, or is someone needs to take the time to, to look at it in another perspective to see if there's anything that we missed, anything huge that, just, that we just missed. Because I, I believe that you all have had this experience with this one bug that was really critical, and you were like, how did we miss this? It was right in front of us.
So the reason why I believe that this memnonic, the San Francisco Depot, uh, worked for us was because it is a sort of a checklist. It's a very speciali specialized checklist, but it helps us to, to see the bigger picture. We are forced, because we have to look at its different angles of the software, we are forced to do that. And this means that we, we don't have to remember to do it ourselves, but we can, we can use the checklist to, to cause us to, to look at this. Um, and one thing that is important also is that you focus on one aspect at a time. If you try to do some sort of a generic strategy for testing, you will sort of brainstorm out ideas, but you, will, you won't be focused. So by being forced to look at data for in a focused manner, you will think of everything that has to do with data. Uh, and that is also interesting. Also, we, we cooperate around the strategy. If you do this, uh, not by yourself, but with a colleague or in a team like we did, uh, you will get a lot of different inputs, a lot of different experiences. People who had a similar problem before can tell you, we need to remember to check what happens when we change languages in this application. And you get this collective mind, and you don't have to... Uh, you will find more defects this way, because there are more brains involved in this. You also put on a criticizing hat, because that's sort of important. For, that's what I do as a tester. I decide that right now I'm going to try to find the bugs. I'm going to try to find uh, the defects. Uh, so I need to, to put on this, get into this mindset that right now I'm trying to find stuff. It's not the same mindset that you have when you're creating stuff. So this is a time box for you to sort of, right now we're going to be critical of stuff. And you can do that collectively. So if you use this kind of, of checklist or a special type of checklist, um, uh, you sort of get into the, uh, the habit of, of broadening your view. Because if you do this a couple of times, you will start to get used to think of these things. And this will become a habit of yours. You will be a team which not only considers the obvious scenario, but also considers uh, different scenarios. This means that you will probably make less mistakes. And everyone will be a bit better at testing, and everyone will be a bit better at thinking of what if this happens, what if that happens. So instead of maybe having one person responsible for this, like if you have a tester on your team, and that would be this person is responsible for thinking of all of these scenarios that can happen, you share the responsibility in the team, and you get a lot more eyes on it. Another way, uh, when you are inside a, a testing session or when you are thinking about your unit tests or when you are thinking about how will the behavior be of this program, there are a couple of things that you can think about and vary. Uh, for example, think about zero, one, or many. Um, it's, it's very applicable to almost anything. What if there is one person viewing this page at the same time? What if uh, nothing happens? You can do that for, for entities or you can do that for... Uh, for basically anything. There's also the beginning and the end are often interesting. The first things, the last things, the middle um, are interesting ways to do it. There is this concept called equivalence classes. For example, if you have um, numbers in general, you have negative numbers, you have zero, which is special, and then you have positive numbers. And testing all the negative numbers doesn't really give you anything, but picking one negative number uh, can constitute an equivalence class. We can say that all of the negative numbers are equivalent, uh, which means that if you've tested one, then you can assume that the rest of them will be okay. So that is also an interesting thing to think about. So if you sort of put on your criticizing hat and try to use maybe a a checklist like this one, or compose your own checklist which works for your product. Um, I think that you can so find that you will be able to write more stable code, that you will be able to see the bigger picture, and that you, will not, you won't be surprised at the end. You will get the surprise in the beginning. Um, so I, I believe that in order to create awesome software, you sort of need to change your perspectives. You need to, to think about what else is there, not just uh, the straight path ahead. And San Francisco Depot, for example, is one way of doing this, but there are a lot of different mnemonics and there are a lot of different ways to do it. 
But if you sort of make it a habit into trying to change in your perspectives, then you will be able to see those moonwalking bears that you actually have walking around in your software. Also remember that focusing is more fun if you actually try to get in there. I, I promise you, it is fun to test. If you try to get in there and try to be a detective or, or creative about your testing, it is a lot of fun. You can also remember to ask for help from, from if you have a tester in your team and you're writing your unit tests and you're wondering, well, maybe have I forgotten anything or is there more to it? Then take a bit of help from your, uh, from your tester. They probably have a lot of input on, uh, well, have you thought about what happens when this, this occurs or, or things like that. And one thing I want to bring up as well is the fact that even, this is what we accomplished when we did this, uh, one of the last things that we did. But what, what would have happened if we had started with doing our mind map before we started coding? If we had thought about what can happen, what do we need to, to make sure uh, doesn't go wrong? If we had done that before we actually got into the programming, then we might not have found all those 20 bugs with some of them critical. Uh, we might have found different bugs, but it might have been more, more minor. So I guess the last thing I want to say is start thinking about uh, changing your perspectives early and um, go ahead and find those moonwalking beers in your software. Thank you. Oh, there's supposed to be questions, right? <laughs> Do you want to ask some questions? Yes. If I make security testing. Um, no, I haven't actually. Well, in a bit. I did test some electronic keys uh, for, for a while. But I haven't had an application where security has been that big of a deal, <coughs> fortunately. Maybe you can ask them, or are they interested in being good programmers to begin with? No, I know that. Yeah, they, they are interested in that, or? They are interested in being good programmers, or are they just coming to their job, or? So you're saying uh, you believe that there should be a, res uh, a shared responsibility for testing, but not everyone agrees with you. Um, that is a, a hard thing to do because if you don't, you may, maybe you don't see what's interesting in it for me. Um, and so you need to try to, to convince someone that this is beneficial for you, that you will, you will look better if you give away code, release code with fewer bugs. It will be better for you to do this. Uh, but you can also try to do it. I, c I once organized a bug hunt, uh, which was a competition. We, we paired people up uh, and we made them um, uh, test for an hour. And then we gave out trophies for the most amount of bugs, the most severe bug, the most creative bug and everything. And we did this when we paired testers and programmers together. We took in support and we took in product owners. And we sort of got people talking about testing and doing it in a fun environment. Uh, and this was something that people, even the ones that who didn't really want to, to test, um, they were asking us to do it again. When is the, when is the next bug hunt going to be? So you can also try to sneak it in by making it fun. And the thing is, if you do that kind of event, is that if you do a retrospective of it, if you talk about it afterwards, you can get a team to talk about testing without you're sort of sneaking it in. Uh, it's not like, okay, now we're going to talk about testing. It's like, okay, we had this fun event. Let's talk about how, it, how did it go and how do we make sure that we don't find these bugs in the future. All right, thank you.